feel like I should pour half of this out so it's not so sloppy. You're just trying to use a little bit of it. Okay, so here's another thing that comes with the kit. It's these little bushings for uh, the studs. Now the lugs on a Camaro are bigger than these are. So, one more in there. Damien provides these that slip on here and take up the slack between the, the stud and the rotor. Looky there, it fits. Before I get too ahead of myself, I want to take these bleeders out and get anti seize on the threads. I don't know if that's good practice or not, but it seems like steel. Um, screws and aluminum threads. Probably a good idea. And if I try any vacuum bleeding, then maybe the anti seize being in the threads will help seal them up. That's always a big problem when you're trying to vacuum bleed, is that it sucks air in from anything. So it could even be air coming in from the threads. So. That's the thinking behind it. I don't know. So I'll do that to all the bleeders before I get too far. We're going to use these uh, Nordlock washers and red Loctite on both the bracket bolts and the caliper bolts. So I think I need to install the bracket first and then the caliper onto the bracket. So that's what I'm going to try. Now, unlike the rears, this bracket needs to be oriented like that, not like that. You basically want that caliper as far in towards the hub as possible. And now I'll bolt up the caliper and uh, torque these to spec. So... My best guess as to what to do here is, is a bracket is a bracket is a bracket. So what's the difference between this custom bracket that Damien makes and the stock GTO bracket? So I figure I'll torque the bracket to the knuckle according to the GTO specs, which I'm pretty sure I'll have to double check again. But, um, well, no, I'm not going to double check because then if I'm wrong, then let's just look it up. Focus on the thing in front of you. Okay. So. Brake caliper. Bracket bolt. At the very top there. We've got 52 foot pounds. And then 90 degrees. Oh god. I hate doing degrees. So. Yeah. So I'll torque the bracket bolts. To. 52 pounds and 90 degrees and then the front caliper bolts for a ctsv is 129 foot pounds seems like a lot 
but it's a big caliper, so I guess that makes sense. But I'll get the caliper bolted up, Loctite and all that, and then I'll set the camera up behind there and torque the middle bolts to GTO spec and torque the caliper bolts to CTSV spec. V spec. Sounds like some rice ricer car or something. And God, does that look amazing. Okay, so I'm going to set everything up behind there and do the torquing. All right, since I hate doing these 90 degree things, I'm going to get it over with and do the middle two at 52 pounds first and then 90 degrees. All right, 52 pounds. Not that you can probably see that. Fifty-two pounds. I try to do as much as I can with the uh, regular ratchet, but it's so hard. I eventually switch over to the breaker bar with an extension. So here's how it works. First, you have to rotate the whole thing until this, whatever you call that, stops on something. Then you turn this dial to zero, and now when I turn this thing, hang on, when I start to crank on it, it'll tell me when it's at 90. This is ridiculously hard. So stupid. Why do they make you do this? What's wrong with a regular torque value? So, 90 degrees. <sighs> so stupid. I hate this. Okay. The thing is stopped up here. Hold it there, return that to zero. Maybe I could do the whole thing with the ratchet and the breaker or the extender thingy. But it, actually, I can't. All right, can you even see that? Not very well, but sort of. Zero. America. Ninety. Okay, now one hundred and twenty nine foot pounds for the caliper bolts. Okay, so that's installed. All right, here are the pads, gigantic pads, pins, bridge bolt thingy, and then this deal. I, I should probably find out what that's called. Pad spreading clip thing. So something I learned on the other side is, and you know, bad sign number one about these pads you got to make sure these pins go in there freely on one of the on the on the other side this was glued on shifted a little bit and the pad the pin wouldn't even slide through the damn pad so i ended up having to get a drill bit and just waller it out so that this would even slide through there at all so 
See how that's not perfectly lined up right there? Now, the pin still goes through it, okay. But it was it was like that, except it was shifted way more and the pin wouldn't even slide through. So that's just something to look out for. Um, the instructions say to apply grease liberally on the back. And it shows it just smeared all over the whole thing. But what I did was, it was like, well, why do we need grease in the middle where the pistons aren't even going to make contact with this thing? So I just kind of did a circle here, a circle here, a circle here. They were big circles, but, you know. And then I don't know if this is the right stuff or not, but I'm using some ceramic brake system grease. Silicone type grease, obviously. So I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing here, but... Put a big old circle right here, another one right here. I mean, the picture on the instructions is just smeared all over it. So it's like, if I'm a little sloppy with where I'm putting it, then that's no big deal, I would say. And then I don't know if you're supposed to or not, but I went ahead and put some along here too. And then something I like to do is just smear it all over the face right here real good and get it all worked into there and in between the... No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. That wasn't even funny. And then I'll try to slide this in, keeping the face against the rotor so that grease doesn't just get stuck along the back there. And then it'll fall down towards the rotor, so... Go ahead and put a pin in right there just to hold it. And just put that the rest of the way in. Just, I'm not going to drive it in yet. I just want to keep it in place. Now, I'm pretty sure that there's no harm in putting this bridge bolt in. So then slide that in that way because this will keep it from turning. So here are uh, the specs, the torque specs for this on a CTSV owner's site. 129 for the front. Uh, the, okay, so this is what we're looking for right now. Front brake caliper bridge pin bolt. 24 foot-pounds. I'm assuming that's this thing, so let's torque that to 24. Okay. So, I was trying to search through the forum to find out how these clips are oriented, and I found this post, and I, I'm pretty sure it's the ultimate CTSV brake thread, which is a million pages. Good luck finding any information there, but I found it last night. And this guy had one of these pad clip things, whatever they are, that had an arrow on it. Well, on the other side, I put mine on wrong, so at some point I'm going to have to flip it around. But just to be sure, I drew an arrow on mine. So that's the way these go. Now, I'm assuming that arrow is the direction of travel. So I'm going to put it in like this, because that's the way this thing travels down the road. So, that's what I'm going to do. I don't think that these need it here and there, but I'm going to put them on there. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I think I should probably grease these points too. So I'm going to install the bottom pin all the way and then take this one back out and grease it. Just going to rob some of this stuff that squeezed out there. A lot of this might... Is this even going to go through there? Put the grease on it? Yeah, sort of. I'll just dab some on there.
and you hammer these until they don't go in anymore. You hear that noise difference? So now I'm going to take this one out. So like I said, arrow in the direction of travel, so pointing down. So you put that in under this pin, over the bridge bolt, then you have to push it down and put this pin in. So let me get this thing greased up. Okay. And you may or may not have heard the noise difference there when it was fully seated. So that's it. That's how you uh, that's how you install the fronts on these rotors, calipers, pads, pins, all that stuff. So. Yeah.